Welcome back to the channel and in this one we'll be talking about Logan Paul purchasing the most expensive Pokemon card to date. We'll also be talking about Jeremy Padower making a special appearance in his video and as well as Logan Paul launching his new marketplace and what that means for platforms like VV and NFTs. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just dive right in. All right, so we are here on Logan Paul's video that he just dropped and this goes into the entire story of him purchasing this Pokemon card and I'm not going to get into all the whole video here, but I'm just going to fast forward to the part where Jeremy Padower pops up and, and makes a special appearance. So without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and roll the clip. Today's the day. <laughs> Today's the day, bro. I think this... So as you can see, Jeremy Padower is right there, and the, the video la labels him expert collector, aka a master collector, you know what I mean? Um, but if you don't know who Jeremy Padower is, if you're new to the channel, he is one of the founders, I believe, or he helps run Jazzwares, which is an enormous company, uh, as you can see here, with some of the biggest IPs in the world. Literally, like you have the wrestling brands, you got the kid brands, Coco Melon, huge, massive ones, Domies, which I have actually bought a couple of those at Target, Halo, you have obviously Pokemon, Nerf. I mean, these are some massive IPs, uh, UFC, and many more so yeah that's who jeremy battle is big deal when you have a license to pokemon to sell those toys that is a massive deal all right so we're gonna go ahead and continue to roll the clip this will be the biggest transaction in pop culture history there's been several in the five million range nothing like this yeah to be honest the seller the guy that we're about to all right so that's pretty much jeremy's uh, special appearance he does talk a little bit more uh, but we're gonna go ahead and roll the clip a little bit more. To me, I didn't know he existed. I had yeah. only heard rumors of this guy because he's st so low key. We can't even film him. He's uh, one of the most private individuals I've ever met. He wants the collection to be known, mm. but he doesn't want to be known. This guy's private, eh? Nice. All right, so we're gonna fast forward to the part where he's actually opening this card. So as you can see, it's like a special case for this card, which is absolutely insane. He, and he actually had to go buy another one of those cards that was like a 9.0 and basically use that as a down payment to get even get this card. So this card, I think it ended up being 5.3 million in total. So we're going to go ahead and continue to roll. <laughs> there it is right there. Oh man, it's literally perfect. So this is like the only t rated or PSA 10 cards illustrators in the world that is known to date. So that's why this card is so rare. Literally the only one in the world right now. So um, we're going to go ahead and get to the part where he actually goes, uh, wins a wrestling match. So he did like this whole wrestling thing and they had the Guinness uh, World Book of Record Keeper guys come out and basically say that this was the most expensive like Pokemon card purchase to date. And Logan Paul actually goes into a promo. We're going to go ahead and roll this. It looks like he actually almost cries, and which made me feel for him a little bit. It's like everybody would love to be that boy growing up. You have all this money and you bought the most expensive Pokemon card in the world. Like that's goals, right? So anyways, let's go ahead and continue to roll the clip. Look at that gold chain necklace with the Pokeball. That's insane. This is the coolest thing ever, but it's even cooler that you, yes, you at home can own this card with me. All right, this is where he gets into his uh, marketplace pitch, which is kind of funny because he goes right into it. Right into the plug. Right into <laughs> so this was a very hard decision to make, but yes, I will be listing this card on a platform that I co-founded. All right, this is where he gets into the marketplace, and we're going to go ahead and go over that. We'll go back to the video in just a second, but just to give you a quick little rundown of what it is, you can basically list your physical collectibles on this marketplace and it fractionalizes these these basically collectibles into tokens so people will be able to invest into your physical collectibles or maybe you want to own a fraction of these physical collectibles so as you can see here some of these like lewis hamilton you have pokemon a whole pokemon pack and uh maybe you want to list your hro box down here as well i've seen people start putting uh, their HRO packs into these acrylic cases as well. And you can see other types of collectibles. You can see obviously like the 98 Pokemon Pikachu Illustrator. Um, you can see 
others like LeBron James, but you get the idea. Um, so this is really cool. And we're going to get into what this means for NFTs in just a minute called Liquid Marketplace. It allows co-ownership of top tier assets. So instead of one person, me owning this card, we as a collective can co-own it together. I'll also be listing it for $5 million instead of the $5.3 million I bought it for. So basically I'll be giving you guys $300,000 discounts because everyone likes discounts. And I should say this, I'll be retaining 49% ownership of the card. So I won't actually have access to it. So this is what it, where it kind of gets interesting, kind of reminds me of DAOs and like crypto, how they operate, but you'll have like the community rather, will have a majority ownership and have a say in what happens with this card. So if like, let's say the collectors want it to be more valuable and they want Logan Paul to go out there and rep that card again at a wrestling match, they can vote and have him do that or they could have it stored in a museum somewhere. So it's kind of like this community driven like voting system uh, based on you know this fractionalizing or tokenization in this case. It'll be in our vault, but if I want to wear it out to fights or a Pokemon box break, or maybe even put it in a museum one day, the community could decide if we want to do that. As a collector, this was a hard decision. I would love to keep this for myself, to be honest, but I, the idea of a community getting to co-own it together. So that's pretty much the video. Um, now it is pretty crazy to see him actually kind of give that card up and have that community ownership was really cool. Um, I know it's probably what, what he was thinking the whole time, but you saw those emotions. Those just looked really real to me and for him to kind of give it up almost immediately after he just bought it was kind of huge. And, you know, I know it's been like his dream or else he wouldn't have worked to like a wrestling match and all these Pokemon card breaks and things like that. So I thought it was really cool. Anyways, I'll have a link in the description below where you can sign up and get started here at Liquid Marketplace. Um, I myself am interested in the future for this platform, and maybe I might decide to list a couple of physical collectibles and things like that on this platform. Uh, maybe even including my HRO cards and maybe like a, a couple of comics or something like that. I don't know. Um, it is going to be interesting to see what they do with NFTs, and I. I would guess that that's what his long-term goal is, is to implement NFTs on, on this platform, especially when it comes to platforms like Vivi, where they have some of the most iconic IP and brands on the platform. The very first appearance of characters and superheroes like Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, um, even bigger, like big IP like Disney as well, like Walt and Mickey, the very first appearance as NFTs of those characters as well. And I think that's going to be massive. I think I was talking to another OG as well uh, in, in a chat, and we both agree that these VCs and billion dollar funds looking to specifically invest into collectibles, and they're looking at platforms like Vivi as a serious uh, vehicle to do that type of investing and really hedge against inflation and really just look at it as a asset and an investment for long term, like a piece of art or a collectible, right? And the collectible market is obviously continuing to grow with the boom of the NFT space. Now, when you have these like really iconic characters, the very first appearances of them in an NFT format, that spells out for a very huge, significant, uh, valuable collectible. And that's where I think they're going to go to. I think we're going to see not only whales and, you know, obviously individuals like Logan Paul and we we've actually seen him mention Ikomi before so we know he knows Jeremy Padwer is actually the one who introduced Logan Paul to VV so it is cool to see this come like full circle and to see Jeremy like pop up in a video um but yeah let me know what your thoughts are about that now this auction or this uh opens up basically where you can uh essentially buy a fraction of this Pokemon card and it's available Saturday July 9th at 3 p.m EST and it's literally the only known PSA 10 Pokemon Illustrator card in the world. So this is really cool. All right, and so if you're interested in that, go check it out, go sign up, use my link below. I think it might be an affiliate link. I don't know, don't quote me on that. Anyways, next piece of story here, we had Comics and Crypto, uh, one of the OGs in the community who created the first grading system in the community, but anyways, or helped create it uh, with them in Cherry Charts. And they tweeted about, out at that Facebook and Instagram has uh, obviously they're coined the term digital collectible or not coined it, but are using that term, um, which I've done a couple of videos on this as well. Um, but I thought this was cool and kind of a funny thing. It says the option to show off your NFTs is coming to Facebook and Instagram. Interesting. They have chosen digital collectibles. People have criticized VV for using this, this uh, description, but it turns out they are and continue to be way ahead of the, their time. 
And uh, I quote tweeted this. I said, when you're a king in the space, the big dogs notice you. This term came from Vivi via Ikomi Reese. And I, I believe that's where Reese actually coined this term for Vivi. So full circle, it is crazy to see this adopted mainstream, all right? That means platforms like Facebook and Instagram and even the macro NFT space are adopting digital collectible as the go-to name for NFTs and they're not using NFT, all right? So this is something we've talked about before where it's like people won't use the term NFTs. It just it just doesn't make sense. It And it stands for non-fungible token, which is long. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound sexy. It doesn't sound mainstream, right? Digital collectible does, all right? And this is why I'm bullish on platforms like Liquid Marketplace, although they're not doing NFTs, it looks like yet, but they still are fractionalizing NFTs into probably crypto tokens or to some degree. Now, I do have to sign up and learn more. I'm very new to this. And Logan Paul just did this video today to kind of like launch this up. So more information on that. Maybe I'll do a dedicated video. But as you can see here, another thing to notate is I did a fun little post on social media. It says, raise your hand if Vivi is turning you into a comic book collector or has already done so. And everybody started posting their comments in below and responding. You can see this uh, the spooky man posting all of his comics that he bought, the OG uh, really cool comic covers from like literally some of the most iconic ones, Ghost Rider and many others. So I thought this was really cool because a lot of old physical collectible collectors don't really realize like Vivi is driving the physical collectible market as well and actually is onboarding physical collectors. And this is proof right here. Um, and then we have another user posting his uh, ultimate fallout and then another one two 9.8 ultimate fallouts. And so this is really cool to see um, that, you know, platforms like Vivi, just because it's digital, it doesn't mean that that's where it stops. Like this is a gateway drug type platform, if you will, where it opens the door for many, many different things and possibilities. Now we are in a bear market as this video is being shot, but I think in the future, they're going to go ahead and test more of these types of things. Uh, obviously we've seen with AMC, but I think when NFTs are more like widely adopted in mainstream and just a normal thing. I think Vivi is going to continue, platforms like Vivi are going to continue to lead the way in the uh, basically like fandoms like this, where you can see physical collectibles uh, or physical collectors basically minted overnight, if you will, not to use an NFT term. But you get the picture and you get the idea. But that's all I got for this video. Let me know what you think about all of this, including the video. Um, hit the sub and bell if you like this video. You know what to do if you enjoyed the content. Without further ado, that's all I got. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. And as always, I'll see you in the next video at the blockchain. Be like an NFT, be authentic, and I'll catch y'all later. Peace.